Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. Today I want to show you my uh, customizable uh, light sensor kit. There's an LDR right here with adjustable sensitivity. And what you can do is you can configure this so that the relay turns on when light hits the LDR or when darkness hits the LDR by doing a little bit of wiring right here. Uh, I'll explain that in the schematic a little bit later. Right now, what I can do is I can take my... I've got a... Uh, uh, an LED bank to simulate the sun or simulate light and right now I've got sensitivity on I, I've got it set, set up so that it requires a heck of a lot of light to turn on so you hear the relay turn on and you see the LED turn on so what I can do is I can adjust the uh, sensitivity so that the LED will turn on with just a tiny bit of light just by playing with the potentiometer. So I'm going to show you uh, a few things in this video. Mainly I'm going to show you how to put it together. But uh, first I'll show you how to wire it. Pin 4 is labeled wiper, pin 3 is labeled LDR, pin 2 is labeled ref minus, and pin 1 is labeled ref plus. Now we've got a variable resistor here set up as a voltage divider so we can set the voltage of pin 4 to 0 to 5 volts and we're going to connect that to either to one of these two pins and the LDR is connected to in series with the 10k ohm fixed resistor now the LDR has a variable resistance based on how much light is in the room uh, more light equals less resistance less light equals high resistance so when there is very little light in the room the voltage on this line will be very will be high and when there's very when there's a lot of light in the room there, this voltage will be very low we can connect these to the inputs of this comparator. When there's more voltage at the positive reference point than there's the negative, the output will be high and the relay will turn on. If there's more voltage at the negative input than there is at the positive input, the relay will be off. The output will be off. Now if we connect pin uh, 4, which is wiper, to pin 1, our positive, and uh, pin 3 and pin 2, what's going to happen is when there's a lot of light, the relay will turn on and we can adjust the sensitivity. If we connect uh, pin 4 to pin 2 and pin 3 to pin 1, then the relay will be on when there's more darkness. So as I just showed you, uh, we had it configured for pin 1 connected to pin 1, or pin 4 connected to pin 1, pin 3 to pin 2. So now let me rewire it so that pin 4 is connected to pin 2 and pin 3 is connected to pin 1. Right now I've got the uh, wiper pin connected to the negative reference point and I've got the LDR voltage divider connected to the positive reference on the on the uh, on the comparator so you can play around with the, and get your sensitivity right uh, I've got my little LED bank here to simulate you know more light like outside so what I'll do is I'll block the block the uh, sun <laughs> if you will and you can make it more or less sensitive using the variable resistor so when you uh, go to engineeringshock.com or electroniclessons.com, you can have a look at the schematic. There's also some output test points, or well, rather one test point, uh, so you can interface this with your own circuit if you want. There is a relay, so you can control AC devices with this using the output terminals here. But um, the, there is also a, an output that is connected directly to the output of the comparator in case you wanted to use that to interface with your Arduino or your other circuit. The label, uh, outputs are labeled SIG, signal, uh, 5 volts and ground. So you get a regulated 5 volt uh, interface, so you can easily interface with another circuit. But primarily you'll be using this for a relay. Now the relay outputs have, uh, the relay terminal has three, have three pins, NO, CO, and NC. NO is this on this side, uh, NC is on this side, and the common pin is in the middle. Common, the common pin, the middle pin, is normally connected to the NC pin, which is normally connected. When the relay turns on, the common pin is no longer connected to the NC pin. It becomes connected to the NO pin. So it's just a very, it's a, it's a power switch. So let's see what the kit looks like. This is what comes with the kit. You've got your custom PCB, a 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, a 0 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor, a 2N2222 NPN transistor, a red LED, 3 millimeters, a uh, 7805 5-0 regulator, uh, a light-dependent resistor, two 10K ohm resistors, a 470 ohm resistor, a 4-pin header, a 
uh, LM386 IC, dip 8, dip 8 socket, a 1N4001 diode, uh, a 3 pin terminal block, a 2 pin terminal block, a 50K potentiometer, and a 5 volt relay. Resistors are not polarized, so you can place them in either way. R3 is 10K. They're all labeled on the board. I'm just going to go through them with you. R5 is 470 ohm, and R1 is 10K. So you've got your two 10Ks and your one 470. Solder them into place. When you're done that, what I want you to do is take your 50K potentiometer, and from a bird's eye view, place it in R2, which is pot 1. And you, on the left hand side here, you can see a little screw head in the footprint. From a bird's eye view, make sure that the, the screw on the potentiometer matches the screw head on the uh, footprint. So once you've soldered all those into place, we'll do the capacitors. you got two capacitors. Uh, C2 is labeled C2 0.1U. That's your uh, ceramic capacitor. It's labeled 104. Place it in either way. It's, it's not polarized. Your electrolytic capacitor is polarized. It's got a short lead and a long lead. Your short lead is your negative lead. Your long lead is your positive lead. Your C1 slot uh, is labeled 10U C1, 10 micro C1. The positive side has a little plus sign. You can't see it from here, but it's very small. So that's on the right side. So make sure your, lead, your long lead goes in the right side uh, and your short lead goes in the left side. Solder that into place. On to the diodes. We've got uh, a 3 millimeter LED and a 1N4001 diode. The LED has, like the electrolytic, has a long uh, lead and a short lead. Uh, short lead is negative, long lead is positive. Yeah, it fits into the LED1 footprint. Now the negative side is the side with the LED1 indicator. The positive uh, side is on the right here. So make sure you place your longer lead on the right and your shorter lead on the left facing the LED1 indicator. Your diode, 1N4004, sorry I said 4001, uh, has a white stripe on one side and just black on the other. On the footprint, there is a white stripe and nothing on the other side uh, with the diode, the standard diode symbol in the middle. When you're placing it in, make sure that the uh, white stripe is, from a bird's eye view, facing the direction of the white stripe on the left hand side here. If you turn it around, you turn the relay on, you're going to have a complete short circuit and your circuit's going to shut down. So line up the white stripe on the footprint to the white stripe on the on the diode and the black side should be on the right here. So solder those into place. Good solid solder joints and next we'll do the uh, the 7805 and the 2N2222 NPN transistor. The 2N2222 NPN transistor has a flat side the side with the writing on it and it has a flat side as you can see it's actually rolling back on its flat side. Uh, the T1 footprint labeled T12N2222 has a flat side on the left here and a curved side. Make sure that from a bird's eye view when you're placing it in that the flat side of the transistor faces the flat side of the footprint and that the curved side of the transistor faces the curved side of the footprint. Turn that around and your circuit will not work. Your 7805 footprint is right here. You'll notice there is a white stripe on the back and no white stripe on the front. The white stripe is an indicator of the back here, which is actually ground. So when you place your 7805, make sure it's placing and you're placing it in, in this way. You can make it flush with the board, but just make sure that you have this mashed right or else your circuit will not regulate to 5 volts. So solder those two into place, then we'll do our terminal blocks and our 4-pin header. You get two terminal blocks and a 4-pin header. Terminal blocks, very easy. Just make sure that you have the screw terminals right here facing outwards like that. Now if you have the screw terminals facing inwards towards say the capacitor you're not going to be able to wire in your power so you got to make sure that they're facing outwards. Um, same goes for the relay output. Make sure that the screw terminals are facing outwards. I've made the mistake before of soldering them in, in, inwards and trust me it's not fun to desolder them so be very careful when you're soldering them to place. Four pin header you've got some options. Maybe you just want to wire directly to the board you don't have to use the, the header. Uh, if you have the small leads coming up through the bottom, like so, you can plug it in directly onto a breadboard if you want, or into another PCB. Or you can wire uh, with the long leads on top and wire wrap to them. So you have some options there, really up to you. Uh, I don't know what your specific application for this would be, so use your imagination. Solder those into place, and then we'll do the socket, and we'll do the relay.
Your socket, your 8-pin dip socket, has a notch on the top side. You'll notice that the LM386 footprint has a notch on the top side as well. From a bird's eye view, make, make sure to place your notch uh, facing the notch on the footprint, facing upwards, because you're going to use that notch for reference for the IC. The IC has a notch too, so when you place in the socket, you have to make sure that the notch is facing upwards towards the potentiometer. If you turn your IC around, bye-bye LM317. So make sure that you, ma you match the notch up to the notch on the socket and then the dip notch to the notch on the socket. Your relay has five pins. Your relay footprint has five pins. It really only fits in one way. When you solder into place, make sure you, you have a nice healthy amount of solder. It should flow nicely. That's where you potentially will have a lot of power going, you can, such as AC or you know uh, high current DC. Anyway, so solder those into place, put your uh, LM317 in the socket in the correct orientation. Lastly, we'll do the LDR, and then we will test it. Lastly, we've got our LDR. The LDR slot, labeled R4 LDR, is right there. The LDR is not polarized. You can place it in either way. Make sure you place it with the head above the potentiometer. If you place it down flush of the board, your potentiometer is going to block light. So you want to make sure that it's at least a centimeter, the head is about a centimeter at least above the potentiometer. There's long leads, so uh, you can use that, you can use your own imagination as to how high above the board you want to have it. Now I've soldered my header with the long leads in the bottom, so I'm going to plug this in the breadboard after we're soldering, after I solder in the LDR, and we're going to test it. I've got the LD or the wiper pin connected to the ref plus or sorry pin 4 to pin 1 connected and pin 2 and 3 connected so I've got my light simulating the sun and you can adjust the sensitivity so let's change it so that uh, pin 4 is connected to pin 2 and pin 3 is connected to pin 1 so pin 4 is connected to pin 3 or, sorry, pin 4 is connected to pin 2, pin 1 is connected to pin 3, and with adjustable sensitivity. It works, no problems. Easy to put together. Uh, hope you uh, take an interest and check us out at engineeringshock.com and electroniclessons.com. Uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Uh, we, can do, we can be reached through engineeringshock.com and electroniclessons.com. So thanks, everyone. Have a great afternoon.